So, hopefully you've all watched Big Swings by now. So in this video, I'm gonna be explaining some of the lines, uh, swings that are in the video and uh, just tell you a bit about like why I made the video and why I love swings so much. So let's get into it. Mm -hmm. um, why did you choose to focus on a video that was all about swings? So, I mean, I, I just love swings. Like, it's, it's my favorite thing to do. So I wanted to make a video compiling some of my best swings and then just to show the parkour community what I'm about pretty much. And yeah. Yeah, obviously even through the process of this video, your progression has gone from like, I would yeah. probably say like okay at swings to being on a whole new level of swings. So what, what has it been like to have that progress throughout the video as well as just that progress in general? I mean, yeah, it's been really good because obviously we started the video and like started getting clips, but then also while I'm progressing, more ideas and more things are becoming possible. So it's like, oh, let's record this, let's get this. So it's like, it's really fun to do. Obviously with that progression, obviously the door opens to more things. Yeah. And um, who is it who inspires you directly uh, in regards to their swings, like athlete wise? So, I definitely have to say, like, uh, especially earlier on, like, Neil and Jordan, when they used to come to the gym, I used to, like, look up to them. And then also, like, Tim Champion, Nico Van Hole, Daryl Stingley, Jaron Hooley, like, all of them, they're big inspirations. Like, watching the videos that they've made has inspired me. Could you pick out anything specifically of those people that are stand out? like attributes or athletic things they've done that you're like yeah that that's exactly what i want to be able to accomplish well like jared nahulu his like front kick is like the perfect front kick like i've got a video of like me doing it and then him like side by side and i've like compared the tech like and then i don't know like the power he gets from his first kick and then to get all the way that's that's something that i'm I like to look at. And like Nico Van Hull, he's just one of the like, he's probably like one of the most creative athletes out there. Like watching his like Hell 5 video and then like every Instagram reel he uploads, he's just like, wow. Speaking of videos, you mentioned Hell 5. Uh, what kind of videos inspired you or do still inspire you when it comes to lashes and things like that? Yeah, I mean, like I mentioned, the Hell 5 video. And then also some of Daryl Stingley's like legendary squadron videos, like the one with um, him and Tim Champion. That was uh, that video, and Tim Champion's Swingdom video. There's there's some of them. No, oh, very good shouts there. Yeah. Obviously, one of the major lines in the video uh, happens quite early on, and it's the one where you go around this kind of vertical wall here with no extra swings mm. uh, is also the line that took you the most attempts uh, I think we counted over 30 in total Do you want to kind of talk us through what it, why that, why the challenge stuck out to you as something you wanted to do, and why it took you so many attempts? So I remember when the idea came into my head for this line, this stick out bar, it was, it was new in the gym, so I knew I definitely wanted to get that in, and the way I sort of like form lines is, 
there's like two parts of the line and then like it's like how do I connect them so for this it was like um, the lache re-grab pre I wanted to get that bit and then also it was the um, lache to the rail when it when that was lower because I remember that was also new after Grim Jam so it was like it had them two and I was like alright so I want to link them in the line and what what made linking those so difficult obviously you achieved it in the end yeah. but with it taking 30 attempts what what when you were in the process of trying to do it what were the elements that were the hardest to kind of get your head around or physically accomplish so like the lache rail free you had to like almost stick it so then you could like rearrange and look because it was really hard because I, I did I've done like the lache re-grab like just from swinging quite a few times but like to get it from like still on the rail there it's like it's so hard to get into the right like position to swing in because you're all like when you do it you swing on like an angle this angle so it's like it's hard to get to from when you're there so obviously we had like uh, I hit the I hit my foot on the wall to drop in and then that was like so hit and miss every time I did it. So it was really hard to get the right um, trajectory. Trajectory, yeah. Um, obviously, being behind the camera a lot of the time, um, one of the things I noticed is you were very particular about certain aspects of mm. your creative lines. And I know one of the things that you were very committed to was no wasted swings. So like no extra swings. If you could minimise swings, you would. Yeah. Is there any reason why you're so, like, uh, for want of a better word, passionate about it being that way? I mean, like, I feel like, especially, like, sort of, like, to a viewer, when you're watching it, it just looks so much better. It's, like, more consistent and, like, flowy. So it's, like, if you have to take that extra swing, it's, like, it's harder to digest when you watch it. So I was, like, I, personally, I love watching videos where it's all connected, it flows nice, I was like, I want to do that. That's good, and obviously it paid off. Mm -hmm. um, there was a few tantrums, a few um, outbursts of anger, stress, mm -hmm. frustration, and things like that. Um, and that, uh, that was probably one of the more technical, like, um, flowy lines, if you want to call it that. Um, mm -hmm. So it's good to kind of see the video had a lot of both things. Do you think you could do any part of it now? Obviously, you can't do the beginning anymore because the, the setup's changed. But what do you think to do in the 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 final connector, the the angle change, cold, just to see yeah. what the progress level is like now? I'll give it a shot. Yeah, yeah. go on. up to the higher part so that's like already a half level up from that yeah but it's definitely not easy yeah obviously it was the connections that made that yeah very challenging line for me yeah um obviously we spoke about your progress uh, throughout this video and uh, the namesake of the video kind of takes from your uh, nickname of Big Ol doing big swings so one of the factors that was very apparent was the power challenges the just the single big swings which I know you are a big fan of So close. This one was like, I feel like this is like the first like big lache that I did. So then after this, it like sort of opened up the floodgate. So it was lache from here to the back wall.
what what drew you to this lache? Well, this lache cat leaf, this um, diagonal one. I remember this. That was like a big challenge for me at the start of 2023, and like to go to that is like it's the, it's the next level up. So, and then I've also seen like Zach Slack when he came here. He was like doing like pre into it, like drop in. So I like Jordan as well. Watching people like them, do, I do it. I was like, I want to do it. I want to become one of them. I know, and this is this is probably the challenge that had the most attempts in as well behind the challenge we just mm. previously spoke about. What what were your roadblocks uh, in this challenge before you actually achieved it? Uh, I'd say probably just like power. Like when I first started doing it, I don't think I quite had enough power because I was doing just three swings into it. And then like, I kept, I kept getting like around here. I had a few like freak attempts where like I had fingertips on and then just pinged off. But like, yeah, I remember like, I think it was probably like two sessions, like two sessions of just straight hitting the wall and falling off, which was annoying. When I finally actually did it was cast. I casted into it. So, this is like the first proper time that I, I've done a big cast. So, yeah, casts were still like quite new. So, yeah, I had, to, I had to work around the cast a bit before I finally went for it and then... How did you improve on that and what tips could you pass on to someone who's probably watched Big Swings or this video? Yeah. What info would you give or secret tips? <laughs> Well, then I remember when I was like practicing casts, we went, we did it on like a lower bar and then just put mats there. So, uh, but on, it was like this bar, just put like mats here and then just like try to go into handstand as much as we could. I remember we was watching a Jordan Ty Lee video and was looking at his casts, and it was like, was analyzing that, and then like, was like, oh yeah, we try this, and then, yeah. So was there any, did you, what were your preps before you went to the big one? Because obviously you had to kind of practice this new method. What did you kind of work, which ones did you do before you actually got to the one at the back? So, from, from this bar to the level slam, I remember, like casting into that and just getting used to like going from waist like to hitting the wall and then when I get, got confident put more power in and then I was like all right I'll finally go for that one and then ironically it took you what three attempts with yeah. the cast and then it was unlocked and done Did that come as a shock? Yeah, I remember doing that, like, the feeling of finally getting it was like, it was just, it was perfect. Like, three whole sessions trying it and finally still, I was like, so happy. And then it seems to be since then, it's now become more of a warm-up challenge than it has actually a physical challenge. Like, your progression just from then has been outrageous. Um, I know, I know. Obviously, big swings was a few weeks ago now. Yeah. We'd obviously finished filming a little bit longer than that, but you've already started to work on bigger things already. So, like, talk yeah. us through what kind of you're looking at doing next. So there was actually quite a lot of things that I didn't get for big swings that are still on my uh, radar. One of them is. Um, Mache from here up to that wall. Like I've had, had quite a lot of um, goes at it and just 
couldn't get close. Oh! Oh! Like Jordan, Jordan Shaw, he's the only one to do this. So, I don't know, it's, it's on my list, but it's hard. One thing about this Lachey Pre that makes it so hard is, like you're swinging from this bar and you're going about half a foot up, a foot. So, it's like the distance isn't massive, but it's the fact they have to like change technique on the lache that makes it so hard for me because I prefer just big swings than like more technical, more level lachets. So that's one that I couldn't get to understand. When you're doing lachets where it's like level, you have to release so much later and that's like, so you have to almost release like, you almost have to release horizontally to get so, so much so far up. And that's like something that I'm just not good at. So it's definitely one that I need to work on. Also, like this Lache Pre has got a lot of factors to it. And one of the most annoying ones is the ceiling height. So when you cast, you can't go to full cast because you'll hit the roof. And I remember on a few of my attempts actually kicking the roof. I do, I, I do remember when Jordan did it, he also hit the roof. So it takes, it takes a lot of power out of your cast, which is power you need to get the pre. So one of the lashing pre's that I'm most proud of is the one behind me from that bar right over to here. It was a Grim Jam finals challenge that um, Zach Slack bounced, but no one actually got it. Zach, yes. Oh! So ever since then, I was like, I want to do that. And then I remember I had like one session where I bounced it, and then that was like the closest I got. I was like, oh, maybe it is actually on. And then it was the end of year jam when Alfie, he came down, and it was also on his list. So me and him both eventually got it. Like he was casting into it and then I was doing like three swings into it. So like it was good. There's like two different techniques going into it and then we both got it. So that was one that I thought that wasn't doable and then I actually did it. So I was happy with it. So I hope you like this little insight of me talking about big swings and how we made it. If you haven't already watched it, go and watch it. I put a lot of effort into that video, so I hope you like it. Make sure to stay tuned because this is not the end, especially Team Reality. We've got a lot of things cooking up, coming in the pipeline, so stay tuned for that. Also, if anyone wants to have a game of lache with me, I could go to you, you come to me. Sam Kopak, he called me out before. I went there, he backed out, so come on, Sam. I'm currently undefeated right now. I've beaten Jake. I've beaten Corey, I've beaten Harry, I've beaten Firish. Sam, you're next, pal. Come on. So I want, I want a real challenge. Come and get it. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs>